How's it going everyone? In this video, we're gonna be changing the front brake pads and the rotors on this 2013 Honda Accord. This should work for the 2013 to the 2017 models. So in this video, I'm gonna start off by showing you what you need, and then we're gonna go into the process. To save you some time, I will go into detail versus some of these videos that kind of just jump ahead, but I'll just be doing one of the wheels and then you can mimic it on both sides. Starting off, we're gonna use the jack. Make sure that this isn't the only thing holding up the car. We wanna make sure we have jack stands because we're gonna be semi under the vehicle, so we wanna make sure we're doing this as safe as possible. So a good jack, if you don't have one of these, you can use the one inside the vehicle. Next, I'm gonna show you the remainder of the tools. Not everything here is needed, but it is recommended. So we're gonna have some wheel chocks. In addition, I'm gonna be using a spotlight here to help me see everything easier. Again, it's on the edge of the vehicle, so it should be relatively simple. Next, I have my Wagner brake pad. Next, we're going to have the rotors themselves. I got these on Amazon, I'll link them below. Um, relatively decent. It was a little tricky because I know on the Accord, the Alex model I think has a smaller diameter, but um, this is I believe a 292, so don't quote me on that, but I will put it in the description. Next, I have a hammer here. Preferably, if you can have a rubber mallet of some sort so that you can hit the rotor so that it comes off if it's gonna be stuck on there with some rust development you want a hammer. So this isn't ideal because this could warp it just a bit if you're hitting it hard enough. So you ideally want something with rubber. What you're gonna see in the video that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this rubber piece from the jack so that it doesn't directly impact it. So that way, if these aren't fitting properly, you can still have the resort of the older rotors. Next, you want a knife or a box cutter just to open up any of these packaging items that you might have new from the store. We're going to have some anti-seize. This is for some of the brake components. And nickel has a higher temperature rating than copper, but copper or nickel will be fine. We want some thread lock for some of the bolts. And here I have a Phillips style screwdriver because the Honda models have a screw that goes in and it basically holds this rotor onto the vehicle. Now, from what I understand is that screw is just on there so that during the assembly lines, when the screw's on there, it's not gonna fall on anyone when they have it in the lift on the assembly line. I have a pretty sturdy flathead here. This is to open up the clamshell on the brake caliper to access the brake pads. Next, this is going to be caliper grease. This is for the guide pins. You can use it on your brake pads as well if you don't have any of this anti-seize. We're gonna have some bungees. This is to get the brake caliper from hanging. You don't wanna damage those brake lines. We're gonna have a breaker bar, work easier. And then here's a cross as well to get off the lugs. This is to compress the piston on the brake pads. That's what squeezes those brake calipers together, those brake pads together. Optional is a mask. This is if you're gonna brush off some of the rust with this metal wire brush. And that's just so that you have a better contact surface so that when you do put on some of this anti-seize, you have a nice clean surface for those two to connect. Gloves, definitely recommend some gloves. You're gonna be working with contaminants and everything. Absolutely recommend getting a pair of safety goggles because of the brake dust and you only have one set of eyes. Next, we're gonna have this brake parts cleaner. This is mostly to get this oil residue that comes by factory on these rotors. So you just spray some of this on. Ideally have some sort of um, towel underneath these so that it doesn't stain your floor. And you can see here, I've had these in storage for a while, so it's starting to come off. That's some rust just from this protective film coming off that they put on factory. So definitely have this. So again, have my set of rotors here. Definitely have a toolkit. This is super reliable to have, and we're going to use some of these to take off the bolts. Jack stands, definitely recommend some jack stands. And yeah, that covers everything here. So next, we're going to start. And put these wheel chucks one on each tire you can put one on either side but I like to put it like this so it doesn't roll forward or back next make sure the vehicle is in park and you've applied the parking brake again simple stuff but some of us might forget to do that next we're gonna start lifting the vehicle with the jack so you want to find a strong point and here you will see kind of looks like a semi loop you can use this as a point to toe but this is a meaty part of the frame so I will be jacking from that part there
lift the car just a bit, or you can skip this step, but lift the car just a bit, and you can start with the breaker bar or your cross. You can start undoing the lugs. Do it in a cross pattern, and don't do it all the way. Just crack it enough so that they're semi easy to take off, but you don't want it so loose that you know it's unstable. So that way, when the car is lifted, if you try doing it then, the tires are just going to spin. On this step here, if you are using your cross, it is going to be the 3 fourths option or the 19 millimeter. And to show you, if you're using your standard toolkit, that's a 19 millimeter size there. So you can use this with the breaker bar. And for the simplicity of this video, I don't have torque specs. Ideally, it's about 90 foot pounds for most car models. Not everything I'm doing here is key advice, but this is always work, just torque it. Usually as, as hard as you can to a reasonable degree. All right, now that we've loosened up the lugs just a bit, I've raised the car, wheels are off the ground. And again, make sure don't go under the vehicle unless you really need to. So next step, I'm going to be sliding the jack stands on both sides. And if you're not familiar where exactly to jack the car, always check your owner's manual. There's a lot of information in there. Here you can see those pieces of the frame that the jack stands will support. Now it will drop a little bit or you could raise it to lift these jack stands a bit. And then we'll do that on the other side as well. Now that we have both jack stands under on either side, we're gonna slowly release this and let it sit on those jack stands while also leaving the jack slightly supporting from the center, just in case something occurs, we have additional support here in the middle. Now that the vehicle is lifted and supported on the jack stands with the jack supporting the center as well, we're going to give it a firm push just to make sure it's stable on there. And next step is we're going to take off these lugs and as additional support, you can slide the wheel under the frame here as well in case it does give out for some reason, it's just additional protection. It takes about five seconds to do that. So we're going to do this, remove the wheels on both sides and then slide one under, maybe both if you want, and then have the wheels there as additional support. Okay, so next thing we're going to be doing here is just inspecting everything Take a little look, see if anything looks loose, undone, cracked. Brake pads are running low. You can see there's a better look, but these are running quite low. So I'm starting to hear a squeal that sounds like one of those little party blower sounds. I'll insert the clips here. And so the reason why you get that noise is that you have these clips that give you an audible notice with time so that you don't wear down to the rotor. Now, in this case, these rotors are quite old, but you see some rust development here, stuff like that. This could be stuck on there a little bit. That's why we have the hammer. But next step we want to do is just turn the car on and turn these wheels towards the left. I'm on the driver's side. We're going to turn these towards the left to give us easier access to work on this caliper here and then do everything. So next step, I'll go in the car and just turn this to the left. Having the wheel turned outward so we can have way easier access to undo anything back here. Noticing here, this guide pin's squeezing a bit hard, so we want to make sure this isn't damaged when we undo it shortly. For those of you doing a wheel bearing or something, you're going to need a bit more tools to do that. Uh, but for here, we're going to be doing the rotors as well as the brake pads. And once we get this off, we'll see if the brake shield is damaged, has any rust. We could always work on that. But yeah, here. We have it turned outward and we're going to start by removing these bolts. There are two here. For the bolts on this clamshell, it is a 14 millimeter. And if you're just changing the brake pads, you could just remove this bottom one here and this will swing upwards, hence the name clamshell. So this is where the flathead comes in play, but I could lift it there. You can see if they're lifting up, revealing 
the brake pads, which I can now slide up. And yeah, these are getting down to the lower life. Having a closer look here, there is a good amount of brake dust buildup. I know for Southern California, this is a lot. Some of those people that are in other areas of the country, this is pretty typical, but so we're going to clean some of this off, make it a little more cosmetically appealing, brushing some of this off. And that's why you wanna make sure we have a mask and eye protection because this could get in the air. It's very fine powder and we don't want that in our lungs or anything. So quickly observing these brake pads, they've definitely served their use. Keep one of these, we're gonna use this to compress, to compress this piston when we're ready to reinstall. But before compressing, we wanna clean all this brake dust because when we push this piston back, it's going to push some of this dust in with it. So we wanna clean some of this off so it doesn't go back into the brake system. Next, to get to the rotor, I'm going to be removing this additional 14 millimeter and then there's another bolt right here and down here that we're gonna remove as well. These are gonna be a bit more difficult to take off. We have a breaker bar, so no worries. I have the bungee tied up now just to have this brake caliper out of the way. And you wanna make sure that it's not putting any stress on this brake line here. So now these guide pins are pretty seized up in there. So I'm gonna be removing these guide pins, cleaning them out. These clips, we're gonna to try to push them out. These are pretty stuck on there too, but that's what the flathead would come in handy for, removing these clips. Put these to the side. Usually your new brake kit will come with additional clips, but if for some reason it doesn't or these fit better, you can always use these. So there's one on the bottom point there and then there's another one on the top here. And yeah, these have a good amount of brake dust buildup on them, but that wire brush can clean a lot. For this secondary bolt, it is a 17 millimeter. I've removed the first 17 millimeter bolt there. There is the second one here. And be advised when you take the second one off, this part can fall off. So just hold this with one hand and then you could by hand remove it here, holding it securely so it doesn't fall on your feet or anything. Having a closer look, this is quite dirty. What we can do is hit this with the wire brush and just be careful with these guide pins and the rubber components because you don't want to break that with any brake cleaner or anything. You don't want it to touch and then start to dry this out and it cracks with time. Let's work on these guide pins next. I'm going to work them out slowly with my hand and just kind of torque it out slowly, making sure not to damage this here. So one of the ways to do it is just twist this slowly to either side like that while pulling out and pushing this down with a little bit of force. Don't force it too hard because you can rip that. Seeing there, this is gonna slide out. Quite dirty, so I'm gonna clean this up and then put some of that caliper grease on this and slide it back in. Of course, there are ways to clean it in here a little more thoroughly. I'm just going to clean this as best I can and then put it back in with new caliper grease. And you do that from both and then make sure to do it on the other side as well. So I've hit this with the wire brush a good amount already. Make sure to be careful around the rubber parts. So you can see I haven't gotten too close there, but I've worked on this a bit. And when you are removing the guide pins out, they can be a little difficult. And you're gonna notice the difference here. This one has a black end on it, whereas this one doesn't. So this black end, I removed it from this part here. So just be careful that if you are taking these guide pins out, one is going to be different. This one went here and that one is on the bottom. So just pay attention to that as you're working on it. There is a way to clean this boot in more detail. Um, for my video, I'm just gonna clean this down and then put it back in, make sure it's having motion and not getting stuck. Taking a closer look at this guide pin, this rubber piece here is basically so that when this guide pin's moving in and out, it stops vibration. And it's kind of swelled up to a point where it's kind of overlapping. So in order to stop that seizing, how it's kind of difficult to pull out, we're gonna cut off just a bit with the razor blade so that this can keep moving in and out freely without getting clogged up in there. So I'm gonna cut it with my razor blade, just a little edge off of this corner here, just a little edge off here so that it can slide freely and it shows this, it shows that piece there. See how it's kind of swelling over? So I'm gonna cut that off right now on that piece. For that rubber piece on one of the guide pins, I ended up removing it even after cutting it because it was kind of seizing up. So I want it to move freely like so. 
and it wasn't able to do it with that. So again, that piece just stops some of the vibration when this piece moves and it kind of like rattles just a bit. It shouldn't be that bad, but if that's the case, I can always go and buy one of these, but that one kind of swelled up too much where it's going to be seizing up in there and I don't want that. For the next one, I'm going to put some caliper grease on that and slide it back in as well. One thing I did here is I sprayed some brake cleaner on a clean towel here and I cleaned around this piston. So you don't want to spray directly on it because you don't want to get that brake cleaner on this rubber component. But just look at how much you know I cleaned there and this would be sliding in and out and that goes into your brake line. Of course, this is something that's more of a detail, but that little effort right, can prolong the life just a bit more. And then this, I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of the wire brush to get some of this dust off. Okay, so I hit this I hit this off with the wire brush. Nothing too crazy, but just to get off some of those layers and just be careful about around this area. And you could always hit this with brake cleaner. You can cover this off and clean that up even more. Here on this screw, I just used the Phillips head here and I'm going to loosen that up and it could be seized on here, but just be careful that this doesn't kind of fall on you because it is turned down just a bit. So just with one hand kind of hold this up. Then another thing you can do is use a wheel lug, just one there, just kind of hold it from falling on you. You see how it's loosening up there? So you can save this pillow screw and reattach it to the new rotor. Next we're gonna take that rotor off. It's not seized up as you can see there, which is good. Um, we're in Southern California, so not too much salt here, so I'll be taking this off. And then just remember, these are about, you know, 10 to 15 pounds, so handle it with care. All right, so it still looks to be in good condition. I can save these as a backup. Nothing too crazy here. Feels pretty smooth to the touch. Just a little bit of rust, but that comes with any of them. So I'm going to put these to the side, have as a backup pair for some reason. The ones I bought aren't that good. The next thing I'm going to do is hit this with the wire brush and make sure to have it nice and consistent so that... When the new rotor goes on, the contact surface is level and it's not slightly wobbling because you didn't hit this consistently. So not much buildup here, which is a good thing. If you want, you see the brake shield here. Again, this is just for brake dust, so it's always gonna have brake dust, but if you want, you can hit that with the wire brush as well. Let's get some of that brake dust off. a lot on the bottom here nice so this brake shield doesn't have much dust this is pretty clean that's because we don't really have much snow and salt next thing we're going to do is hit this with a little bit of brake cleaner make sure to dry this off and then after we hit some brake cleaner on there we're gonna put some anti-seize so that the next new rotor doesn't lock onto here if it ever gets salty or with the rust that doesn't stick on there. And then with an extra towel, I'm just putting it to cover that piston so that the brake cleaner doesn't get into it. Then have something under to catch any of this drip. Let that drip off for a bit and we're gonna dry this off as well. All right, most of that evaporates pretty quickly. So now that it's dry, we're going to put some anti-seize and just rub some on there, on all these points here. And make sure if you are touching anti-seize, you start switching gloves. Quickly here, I'm lining up the previous rotors with the new rotor, and you can see that they are the same size and diameter. For this new rotor, we're gonna hit it with some brake cleaner because there is that thin film that the companies put because these are in storage so it doesn't rust. So we wanna remove that film. and hit both sides of the rotor with that. Okay, our next step is to get a little bit of this anti-seize and just place some around here and just rub it on. And I'm gonna be changing my glove after this so that I'm not placing this anti-seize anywhere else. All right, so now that we have it on there, I'm gonna change my gloves because I don't wanna be touching the brake components with this anti-seize. 
Okay, next up, I'm gonna put the rotor on here. And see, I have no anti-seize on my hands, so I don't want anything to be on this rotor. I'll have it nice and clean. Okay, so I've placed the new rotor on here, and I'm using one of the lugs from the wheel to hold this stable and in place. That way, when I'm working on the clamshell and all of the brake components, this is aligned nice and straight. As for the brake pads, they come in a set, a total of four. You're gonna notice here, two of these have these clips and these do not. So you know that one clip goes with one of these and then one clip goes with one of these. So I'm gonna separate these. And on the back of these, I'm gonna put a little bit of anti-seize as well so that it doesn't get stuck to any of these parts. Make sure it's on the back. And after doing so, make sure your hands are clean or change your gloves because you don't wanna get it here. You cause slippage and your brakes don't work too well. Next, what you want to do here, you're going to see that's the old brake pad. And then with this compression tool, I'm going to push that piston back down nice and easy. What some people have done is they'll loosen either the bleeder valve or if you open the hood, there's the master cylinder and you can open that reservoir. If you're doing all four brakes or you want to be a little more cautious, you can open the bleeder valve just a bit or the master cylinder under the hood. So I'm going to do this nice and slowly and compress it down. You can see now this has been compressed down and this will go over these new brake calipers for stability we're going to add that little phillips screw back in here i noticed it was a bit wobbly when i put it back on even with the brake caliper so i don't want to put the wheel back on and it's still a little loose so i'm going to add this back on just for peace of mind and time efficiency let's torque that down see it's not wiggling anymore for the next step to hold this component on i'm going to put loctite on these 17 millimeter bolts a little bit nothing crazy let's put a little more loctite on the second one spread that out just a bit for these 17 millimeter bolts we're going to torque it down a fair amount um, again i've heard anywhere from 80 to 90 foot pound so i'm just gonna put a good amount of elbow grease into that again it's not to spec so for those of you that do want to do it the officially appropriate way you can do it with a torque wrench next I'm going to reattach this clamshell here and just make sure to hold it support it and what we're gonna do is put the first 14 millimeter bolt through the top here and make sure to hold it because the brake line is loose. Torque this down a fair amount, not all the way. I still want to swing it open to place the brake pads in. So now I can swing this up and I'll be inserting my brake pads. Next, I want to swing this clamshell down and I'm going to squeeze the brake pads so that the clamshell can go over them. And if it's not aligning, you, you have to kind of squeeze them and keep in mind this guide pin does slide in and out. So you might have to pull this clamshell towards you so that it aligns in addition to squeezing this. So you can see it's kind of falling in there. And then just align it with this bottom guide pin that will be pushing out a bit. So a little tricky, you're going to have to kind of squeeze and then sometimes pull this clamshell towards you, or sometimes even have to pull this guide pin in so that the bottom part does lock in there. So this 14 millimeter is already on, and I put a little bit of Loctite already down here for this second 14 millimeter that does go in, it screws into that guide pin. These are gonna be around 20, 25 foot pound. And again, that's not an official number. So for those of you that are trying to do it to spec, um, please, if you can, provide it in the comment section. Um, but for me, just torque it securely. Not as tight as those larger 17 millimeters because this is screwing into that guide pin, whereas the other one is a bit more sturdy. So I'm gonna torque down that 14 millimeter. Nice and secure, right? You wanna torque it to where it's almost bottomed out. And then after that, you wanna do anywhere from half a turn to three quarters of a turn. Securely. And I'm kind of speeding up here because it is going to be raining soon in Los Angeles. 
so there you go that's about a almost a half turn Okay, so now we're all set here. I already did the same thing on the other side. We're going to straighten out these rotors and we're going to place both of the wheels on with the lugs cross pattern, torque them down most of the way, drop the car and then complete torquing them. And lastly, you want to go in the vehicle and pump the brakes because keep in mind, we did push those pistons back. So we need to get momentum in there so that they do squeeze down and then we have firm pressure like normal on the brake pedal. Next step, we're gonna reattach the wheel. Now that the tire, now that the wheels are about 75% torqued, I'm going to raise the car with the jack and then pull out the jack stands. And then from there, we're gonna finish torquing off the wheels We're gonna let the car down slowly. Make sure to remove the wheel chocks. All that's left to do now is start the car and we're gonna pump the brakes to build that pressure and then we're gonna feel the pedal go from very light to that nice consistent pressure. And then for bonus, I'm gonna take a little practice lap just to see how everything's functioning. So we're gonna start the car. And let's pump the brake. There we go, it's getting a little stiffer now. And again, for some reason, should you be driving around and your brakes aren't working, Keep in mind the rears have not been changed, so those are still there. And then worst case scenario, you could always downshift a bit and then pull your emergency brake slowly but surely to help you sl slow down. Okay, so pros and cons. I replaced the front brakes and the rotors, but when I reverse, I'm still getting that squeal. So that's a good indicator that it's gonna be the rear brake pads. Now I did look in through the wheel and kind of looked <coughs> at the caliper <clears throat> and I can kind of see the brake pad and it does look low it's probably going to be the rear brake pads. Here I'm gonna reverse, just so you can hear the sound. A little embarrassing, but no big deal. I'm gonna order the rear pads. I'll do a video on that as well. And I'll order some rotors just for the heck of it. So we can get that full replacement and make sure that it is the rear pads. But <clears throat> let me get out really quick and just show you guys. You can see the pad looks pretty low there. So again, if you are getting a noise like that, have someone reverse the vehicle if you have someone to help you and you can be outside listening so you have a better idea of where that sound's coming from. Inside the car, we're kind of in the middle, so it's harder to tell if the sound comes from the front or the rear. All right, everyone, that about wraps up the video. <laughs> I didn't fix the issue, which was the sound. Ultimately, I did have to put new front brake pads anyway, and those rotors I had for almost two years at this point, so putting them to good use. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the rear brake pads and the rotors. Like, subscribe, please drop any questions you have down below in the comment section. I'll be sure to reach out. Hope everyone's having a great day, great weekend. And that said, striker out.